So since recording is in progress, I'm guessing that's a cue to start. Okay, so um, first of all, next Friday I will be traveling. So we can't have the session. Um, we can have the session um, before, I mean, on Thursday, if that's all right with you, okay? Uh, I'm definitely, I don't think anybody would like to have a session on Saturday because it's Christmas. Okay. So let me know what you guys want to do. Okay, now let's start with homeworks. Okay, so um, I mean, there were some errors, etc. But where you guys uniformly did not do well is you cannot talk about nearest square only looking at one. You need to look at the next square. Okay? So that part is missing. Um, here, the labelings in the picture are not correct. Here, um, it's, again, there is, this one is done. Okay, no, here also there is similar error and here too. I have not commented here, but I have directly commented here. And here there are only person who did the set uh, problems. Now, here, there is no error as such, pictures, etc. are clear. But when we say largest square or nearest square, we mean integers. So no need to go into decimals. And regard, because once you go, it will just continue, okay? And uh, the thing is, again, like nearest square, you really need to look at the next one, 84, and then conclude, okay? So that's something that you, I don't know why, but you still haven't got it, okay? I mean, I can see a white um, square outside, but I mean, what exactly is it? Okay, so that's something that you need to, need to really get, okay? I don't know why you are not getting it, but that's how it is, okay? <laughs> Okay, so as far as today is concerned, you want to discuss um, sets and in sets, um, it's about representation of a set, types of sets, set operations, cardinality and practical problems, okay? Okay, um, so I think we talked a little bit about representation of set. Basically, there are two ways. Um, one is you make a list. And you need to put it within curly brackets. So here, you know, various things come in uh, with commas, no repetition, etc. And uh, it can be an infinite list also. And the second is uh, you mention the criteria. Okay, so in this case, um, it is written as, you know, X such that uh, X um, follows this criteria, okay? So these are the two ways of uh, representing a set. Another visual option is to, um, Look at um, it. 
you know, uh, the visually when you see it, um, sets are basically represented as, you know, like this. And whatever is inside is basically in that set. Now, these are called Venn diagrams. And they're very useful, especially when it comes to set operations. Okay. Uh, so that's where they are mostly used. Okay. Um, now, next you wanted to discuss was types of sets. Well, um, again, we had discussed a little bit. Um, uh, one thing we did discuss was the empty set. Okay. Then we have the singleton set. Okay, so these are sets with just one element. So some, they will look like this. Um, you know, like this. Okay, then there are, of course, finite sets, sets with finite number of elements. There are infinite sets, sets with um, infinitely many, um, uh, infinitely many uh, elements. So for example, if you are looking for um, the possibilities, if you roll a die, what are the possibilities? That is going to be a finite set, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, but if you think of the set of all integers, that's an infinite set. Okay, now later on in uh, set theory, it came out in set theory only that there are at least two different kinds of infinities. Uh, one is called the countable infinity and all the number sets except real number and things larger than that fall into this first type of infinite states, which is the smallest possible infinity, okay? Where you can basically make a list and you can count. And then comes the real numbers, which is bigger. And there is no way you can actually make a list of all possible real numbers. Um, there are just too many, okay? And there are some nice, uh, videos, etc., regarding that. Um, and in, in some ways, um, it, it may seem to be a bit surprising, but infinite sets can be quite interesting. Okay, So um, whole numbers, national numbers, integers, rational numbers, even constructible numbers, these all fall under Count, um, countable sets, countable infinite sets, and real number, it becomes uncountable. It's a larger class of infinity. And there can be even larger classes. Then there is this concept of subset and superset, okay? So subset is something um, that is part of a set. Okay, something that is smaller than the given set. And is so every element of the subset is within the given set. So let me draw, so I have drawn one set here. So let me draw a subset. <coughs> okay, let me use a different color. So, So this is a subset because um, it's completely contained within the, uh, the first set, the red one, okay? Similarly, superset will be the other way. The given set will be subset of the superset. So now let's draw a superset.
Oops. Uh, sorry. Okay. And so this is a super set. Okay. So as you can see, like the subset is inside and the superset is outside, okay? Now there is a notation. So uh, let's also call this, give them some names. So let's call, let's say the superset is C. Um, let's say the subset is Why is it not allowing me to write here? That's very strange. Okay. Uh, okay, finally. Okay, so this is subset B. And let's also call the original set A. Okay. So the way it is written is um, A is a subset of C, right? Because C is the superset and B is the subset of A. So this is the symbol of subset. And if you want to look at the superset symbol, then um, A is the superset of B and C is the superset of A, okay? So it's kind of like the greater than and less than um, symbols, okay? And uh, uh, and you basically the bigger set is where the opening is, just like you know the greater than and less than symbol except that it is rounded, not like a cone, but it is rounded, okay? So that's basically the difference in terms of notation, okay? So that's like the notation of subset superset. Now, um, so typical example will be, you know, the set of odd numbers is a subset of the set of natural numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six. The set of natural numbers is a subset of the set of integers, okay? The set of real numbers is a superset of the set of integers, okay? So, um, so for example, this is how we write natural numbers, that set, you know, that is a subset of the set of integers, which is written with a Z with a double which is a subset of the real numbers, okay? So that's kind of how things are connected. Um, if we take a shape kind of example, um, equilateral triangle, okay, let's say squares. Squares will be a subset of quadrilaterals, which will be a subset of polygons. Okay, 
And if you look within quadrilateral, there are a lot of set kind of relationships. And uh, uh, we can actually use them to um, discuss stuff at class nine level, I think, because they are quite familiar with quadrilateral. So you can use them quite a bit to talk about you know, set, subset, et cetera, et cetera, OK? Um, let me pause here and ask, is there any question up till this point? Any question, anything that you wanted to ask? We haven't gone into set operations yet, but so far. There were very few homework. So I have no idea if you have read the um, NCRT chapter that I had chap that I had asked you to. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so. Now, in case of sets, there are two primary uh, operations. One is uh, called union, another is called intersection, okay? Just let me make a little bit more space. Okay. Yeah. So suppose there are two sets. Okay. So this is one set, and uh, there is one more set. Okay. Okay, now there are several possibilities. One possibility is that these two sets, they may not intersect at all. They may not overlap at all, or they may overlap. It can also happen that this one is actually completely inside, it's a subset, or it may so happen that this is actually a superset. Right? So let's look at the possibilities. So possibility one is if there are two sets, it can be a superset, which we have discussed. It can be a subset that also we have discussed. It can be have nothing to do with the first set. Okay, so they are completely separate, no overlap. Okay, now if that happens, they are called disjoint sets, okay? There is no element in common, okay? And the more interesting case will be when they intersect, when there is some overlap, though one is not completely inside the other, okay? So in this case, when we have a situation like this, then there are two sets which are of, a lot of importance to us. One is this portion here. Okay. This portion is called the intersection. Okay. So if this set is, let's say, A, and this is called B, then this common portion is called A intersection B. I mean, in one way, you can, this may be the, I mean, set theory is very important in, in mathematics, very, very important. And you also see another characteristic of mathematicians here, how lazy they can be. You see, for 
subset and superset, the notations were like this, right? It's the same thing just flipped around. Now they have just rotated that, that same U and make, made it intersection, okay? So this is called um, intersection. Uh, okay, so, okay, so A intersection B, okay, so this is one set which is of a lot of uh, interest to us, and this is one primary operation um, in sets, okay, so what will be an example, okay, so consider the set of all, and this is a very known example, set of all rectangles and consider the set of all uh, rhombus, all, all rhombi. Then what shape comes? So what do you get when you intersect that? So what are the quadrilaterals, which are, or we can be more precise, what are the parallelograms, which are both a rectangle and a rhombus. And I want you to respond to this. Swati, I didn't get the question properly. So let's say the set A, okay? A is the set of rectangles, okay? And B is set of all rhombus, okay? All rhombi. Then what is A intersection B? Which quadrilaterals are both rhombus and rectangle? Square? It's not a very hard question. So what are the characteristics of a rectangle? Two sides are equal. I mean, there you get a lot of shapes with two sides equal. You need to be more, something more specific about rectangles. Only two sides equal? What about the other two sides? Yeah, uh, the opposite sides will be equal. Okay, okay. But that's not enough, is it? Mm. So what else? Opposite sides need to be equal. It forms a uh, 90 degree. Exactly, so all angles are right angles, yeah. right? In fact, that itself, if you say all angles are equal, that actually pretty much defines a rectangle, even though textbooks don't say it that way. Okay. Okay, so all angles are right angles, okay. And what do we know about rhombus? How do you characterize a rhombus? Okay, and anybody knows what a rhombus is?
All sides are equal. All sides are equal. Now, which shape has, I mean, which quadrilateral has all sides equal and the angles are all right angles? Square. Yes, square. I mean, why did it take it so long? So A intersection B in this case is going to be squares. Okay. Okay. Now, so that's what is an intersection. Now, if you have this situation out here, okay, where one A is the bigger set and B is a subset. In this situation, in this situation, what is going to be um, A intersection B? All sides are equal. So in, in the subset kind of a situation where one set is a subset of the other, what would be A intersection B here? You have the Venn diagram here. Try to think of the common area or the common portion between A and B. A is whatever is inside that red ellipse and B is whatever is inside the green ellipse. So what is common to both? Yeah. The opposite sides are uh, equal and parallel. We are not talking about rectangles and rhombuses right now. We are talking about this diagram, okay? So whatever is inside this one, that is A. Okay, so this is all A. Whatever is inside this, that is B. So this is B, okay? Now, what will be A intersection B? What is the common portion? B. Exactly. Okay. So therefore, so in case of a subset situation, the subset becomes the intersection. Okay. If there are two sets, one is sitting completely inside the other, there in the intersection is going to be just the subset. Okay. So now I have to ask this, what would be in this case, Same picture, okay? What will be A intersection C? A. Exactly. Good. Thank you. Okay. So that's clear. Now comes the next uh, operation. And in that, we basically look at whatever is there throughout. Mane, whatever is there in A or in B, okay? So all this region, okay? It's fine if it is only in A, if it is only in B, or if it is in both, okay? This whole thing is, has a different name, okay? So this is called A union B. Again, you see the laziness, right?
okay using the same symbol just turning it from side to side that's all okay um so i'm trying to think of a good example of union um okay let's take the same example okay as before okay where a is a set of rectangles b is a set of rhombus then what would be a union b anybody i mean there are many ways probably to express it it may not be as uh, let's see what you have to say what would be a union b so anything which is either a rectangle or a rhombus rectangle and rhombus yeah i mean it can be rectangle or it can be rhombus mm. or both both no see you are taking the union so you you do take all the rectangles and you take all the rhombus okay okay now together what will you call that set a set of what Set of polygon. You can't say polygon because we are talking about a very first of all only within quadrilaterals, and then to only about certain parallelograms, right? Yeah. All rectangles are parallelograms. All rhombi are parallelograms. So. Uh, yeah, parallelogram. But there are parallelograms which are neither rectangle nor rhombus, so you can't say that it is the set of all parallelograms. Okay. Okay. So. One way, and there are two possible ways I can think of right away. how you can express them one will be set of rectangles and rhombi okay that's almost like cheating okay the other one will be set of parallelograms with line symmetry okay see parallelograms themselves don't have line symmetry but if it has a line symmetry it will be either a rectangle or a rhombus or both so that's one way of thinking it now since we are talking about a union b etc etc um let me erase it a bit so that it's a, okay i didn't mean to erase the whole thing Okay, so definitely need the arrow, and yeah, to find it. It's all this. Okay, now in this, this is going to be parallelograms. Parallelogram will be like this. 
Okay, so let's call this C. This C will be parallelograms. Okay. So there are things which are outside the union. Um, and uh, they are just parallelograms. Okay. So, um, if you take, let's say, all odd numbers, okay, and B is all let's say prime numbers, okay? Then what will be a, I'm going to write, you know, inter a in B meaning intersection, what will that be? And what will be a union B? First of all, if you have this, you know, A is all odd numbers and B is all prime numbers. Which one of the cases is it? Is it like one is a sub, is it like uh, this situation or is it like this situation? That's the first thing you need to decide. Second situation. Yeah, and why? I mean, odd num primes are mostly odd numbers, right? Yeah, yeah. So you are you are not you are saying ki B is not a subset of A. So there is some prime which is not odd. Yeah. So can you think of a prime which is not odd? Anybody? A prime that is not odd. So essentially even prime. Okay, now I have to ask what are the prime numbers? Two is the even prime number. Come again. Can you can you repeat, please? Two swati. Yeah. So therefore, you know, the odd numbers and prime numbers are a case like this. And so what will be A intersection B? What will that set be? That's not a difficult set to point out. Uh, in A intersection B, uh, for that odd number, mm -hmm. 
See, it has to be odd and it has to be prime. For intersection also. Yes, for intersection, it has to satisfy both criteria. See, intersection is this portion, okay, which sits in both. It's part of A and it is part of B. So I have even tried to make a list, okay? So what is there in both? Three, five, seven, eleven. Exactly. So what are these numbers? Three, five, seven, eleven. Prime number. And also Come again? number. Prime number. Yeah, so simply put, this will be all odd primes. Yes. Okay. That's it. It's, it's very simple. You know, 3, 5, 7, 11, etc. Okay. Now, what will be the union? A union B. Odd prime number and even prime number. What about the odd numbers which are not uh, prime? For example, 1, for example, 9 or 15. What about them? Uh, for that only I said odd prime number, prime number. No, the moment you said odd prime number, it means numbers which are both odd and prime. That's the intersection. Mm. Now we want the union. Prime number. Yeah. So as Shiva has mentioned, it is basically uh, in a, you can make a list. If you make a list, it becomes very easy. It's one, two, three, and then the odds. Okay. So you basically need to include just two in the odd numbers and you are done. Okay, so this is one option. Okay, the other option is, so suppose you want to write in the criteria way, then we can also write it like this x such that x is x equals to or x is equals an odd number. Okay. So we can write it this way also.
Now you may want to write, there's another way you can write it using the um, notation. You can also write this as A union, the singleton set two. That is also going to be the same as this, this union. Okay, they are all the same. Okay. Now, let's come back to this Venn diagram. So, what would be A union B in this case? Where B is a subset of A. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. And similarly, uh, what would be A union C? C. So whenever you take union, um, you know, of two sets which are uh, in a subset superset relation, the biggest set, the superset always is basically the union. Okay, and you can see that very clearly. Like if you are talking about A intersection B, then you can clearly see that you know it's it's basically this portion, right? It's this portion. Okay, so that's done. If you are talking about a intersection B, uh, a union B, then it's everything that is within A and that automatically includes B. So that's A union B and that's clearly A. Okay. And same way you can think of A intersection C and A intersection, uh, A union C. Okay. So that's basically the two operations that are there. Now there is a third operation, okay? So the third one is called a subtraction. Oh, there's one more, okay? Uh, there's, or let's say there are two more, okay? So let me clear this and then we can talk about those two, okay? So let's say we have one set which is called like the big superset, okay? And within that we have, let's say another smaller set, okay? This, this bigger set is usually called, and let's call this one A. Okay, let's call this set A. And this bigger set outside is called it's called the universal set, like which includes everything. So it's the, you know, it's U, okay? Um, and then one thing that we are often interested in is things which are not in A, okay? So we are interested in these things. Okay, things which are not A, outside A. Okay, now that set is called A complement and we write a small C for complement or we write it as A dash. Okay, both are perfectly fine. Okay, so this is 
a complement. So that's another thing that you may be interested in. Okay. Uh, so that's another operation. Okay. So what is the complement of a set? Okay. Um, uh, so for example, you remember the set of odd numbers. What will be a complement? Two. Yeah. What is the con what is a complement where a is the set of odd numbers? Even prime. There is no prime coming here. We are only talking about odd numbers. Oh yeah. Okay. okay. I thought uh, before said. Then it's uh, even number. Exactly. So, a complement will be set of even numbers, okay? Similarly, if we have B as set of prime numbers, okay, what would be B complement? One prime number. And what is like you know? Composite. Huh? Composite. Numbers. Yes, but will it be only the composite numbers? It's a bit of a trick question. I think it includes zero. No, zero is it not considered when you talk about uh, prime, non-prime. So in both cases, what is very important is to define what is U. So when you are talking about odd and even, what will be the set, the universal set? And similarly, Whole numbers. For, exactly. So in the first case, it will be the set of whole numbers. Okay. So it is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Okay. And when we talk about the second set, what will be the what will be the universal set here? 
when we are talking about B as prime numbers. Natural numbers. Exactly. Thank you. So now if U is the set of natural numbers, which is uh, one, two, three, four, <coughs> etc., then what will be B dash? What will be B complement? Is it going to be only the composites? Only the composite numbers or are we missing something? We are missing one thing. Exactly. So this is going to be set of composite numbers and one, okay? And you can write it as um, composite numbers union, okay. I'm going to be a bit lazy. So this is, let's say C for composite numbers, union, the singleton, one. Okay. Now that leaves us with the notion of one set minus the other, but we are out of time. So we will discuss that tomorrow, um, next time. As I mentioned, next Friday I'm traveling, so I won't be able to be there for you at 12. Um, so we can do it either on um, Thursday or we can do it the following week, unless you go for a holiday and in which case we meet in 2022. So let me know. Okay, that's all for today.